Hey y'all, um, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a very special guest with me. I have Brandy Berwick. Um, I met Brandy through a mutual friend about three or four years ago. Has it been three or four? Yeah. I think it's been a little bit longer than it's that. It's probably been longer than that. Maybe about five years. I think maybe five years ago. Um, and so we've been able to form a relationship and I just love Brandy. She, um, it's such a blessing to my life, her love for God and um, just her story of walking in faith that she'll come back and talk about later. Um, but I have Brandy on today because I want to talk about shame and identity and some of our own struggles and challenges and kind of why we think that is and how the enemy uses things that we do that go against the word of God to make us continue to walk in shame and condemnation. So. Shame is something that I've dealt with a lot. Like I still sometimes have to fight those thoughts that the enemy would try to place in my mind about things that I used to do mm -hmm. um, to make me feel unworthy. Mm -hmm. So it's a constant battle um, mm -hmm. in my mind. But the one thing I was studying um, in the Bible as it relates to shame is in the garden. Mm -hmm. How in Genesis 2, at the end, it says that the man and his wife were naked mm -hmm. and they felt no shame, mm -hmm. okay? Well, you go over to three and mm -hmm. you have the enemy, the serpent comes and entices her with the fruit mm -hmm. and they eat the fruit. They realize they were naked and they felt shame mm -hmm. from what they did. And they tried to cover themselves mm -hmm. with fig leaves. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is such a true picture of us even today, you know, and how we do things that go against the word of God, then find ourselves walking in shame. And the enemy tries to use that to kind of go um, against what Jesus has done by restoring us, by making us whole, and by setting us free from those things mm -hmm. because we're no longer slaves to sin. So that was one thing I want us to kind of talk about a little bit as well, just how the enemy uses that. So in your life, how have you seen the enemy try to attack you with shame? Um, so I'm a single mother mm -hmm. and, um, getting to that point, I think a lot of it is we have this need in society to, I think all of us, we want to feel accepted. Mm -hmm. We want to feel wanted. We want to feel appreciated. And so we allow like certain things to kind of, um, kind of define who we are in Christ mm -hmm. instead of really know. So I think for me, it's been replacing like the lies of the enemy with the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. But it took some time. Like my past, I couldn't even talk about it before. Now I'm like, what you want to know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what you want? What you really, do you really want to know? <laughs> because there's things in my closet that some people know about. There's things in my closet that some people don't even know about that I haven't haven't said it. and not mm -hmm. that I'm not ashamed that I'm ashamed to say it at this point um I would tell the world of the things I mean I felt shame because I felt like my identity had to be found in man mm -hmm. because of the lack of love like for myself mm -hmm. I was ashamed that I felt like that nobody knew this that I had to look at pornography to think that was a way to teach me to be better sexually so then I can hold this man because I didn't know all this stuff. Like, I wasn't advanced in that. And so I didn't lose my virginity till I was 20 years old. So where some people were more advanced and I'm like, I want this caliber of a man. So I felt like I needed to be able to do this. Yeah. Um, I think that the shame of um, wanting to look a certain way and thinking that I had to look um, a certain way and clothe myself a certain way or that finding my identity in, in, in clothes and stuff and not really opening up about what my, really, my feelings were. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of shame inside of things that I had done. And then I think it really hit home when I had my son out of wedlock. And then five months into um, being pregnant, I found out that he had got married. And so not only was I already dealing with the fact that people knew like Brandy's a Christian and they didn't know I was having premarital sex. It was like, oh, Brandy's, you know, yeah. she lives a pretty, you know, good kind of wholesome life from what yeah. we can see from the naked yeah. eye. And no one knew if they opened up that closet door, <laughs> 
there was so much that will truly fall out of it. I think for me, when it really started was um, after I had my son, um, people would ask me <laughs> who my son's father was. And in my mind, I wanted to say that it was like, <laughs> I was a second <laughs> <laughs> Virgin Mary. And, you know, God's angels just came. It was immaculate conception. Um, but, of course, we know that clearly was not the story. Um, so I think for me, it was really starting to get into God's truth. I dated a guy after about a year of my, knowing my son, and I remember telling him all my, not everything, but all my trash and thinking that he would just walk away. And he didn't. But I had to know, too, I was in a broken space at that time, super broken, not in any condition to be in a relationship with anyone, still working through trying to be strong to, as a mother and not letting him see any of that mm -hmm. and working and doing all these things without having the assistance of anyone's help. I really kind of walked that journey alone for a long time. I do believe during that time there were some depressing things. Then thinking of after I had my son, thinking how blessed I was to have him because I had an abortion years prior to that. So there was so much shame and so much that people didn't know. But I think as I, I remember the guy that I was dating at that time, about nine months in, he said, you need to go to counseling. But I think he really wanted me to go to counseling thinking that was going to make our relationship better at that time. But what really took place was that God started to remind me of his truths mm -hmm. and who I was. And before um, I was 20 years old and started diving into sexual sin, mm -hmm. I wanted to go back to that brandy that was strong in Christ. So I think it was um, four, First John 4. I'm going to pull up my Bible on my phone. But I couldn't blame anybody else at all but myself. Mm -hmm. I think I remember being on the phone with my friend back in like 2016-17. And I was still with this guy and we had got back together. And I was just thinking about my heart and just still some shame I dealt with. And like, I don't deserve to be married or thinking all this stuff. And... I felt like he picked out every single wrong that I had about me. So because he knew that was wrongs, it was like, I felt like he used them to do anything to make me like down to here, you know, to make me feel less than. And I remember reading 1 John 4, knowing God through love. And I won't read it all, but when you have a moment, read 1 John 4, um, 7 through, I think it's verse 21. And in that, I was just like, wow, I, I need to allow God to perfect his love in me. And I haven't allowed him to do that in so many years. I was looking for so many other things, for a person, a friend, a man, my job, to fulfill those things mm -hmm. that I felt shameful about and hoping that they would fill me with love, hoping that they would fill me with with, I guess, peace or joy and all those things that they could not do. Yeah. Once I realized God's love for me, and then I go over into Romans, I think. I think it's Romans. But even when I think about, I mean, is it Romans that says we all have fallen short? Yes. I don't know the chapter. Yeah, I think it's Romans. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um... I believe it's Romans. Well, why I'm finding it. And I'm drawing a blank. Sorry for the moment of silence. Because <laughs> I'm that person that I need to. And I know this verse. Um, Romans 3.23. Mm -hmm. um, for we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I think it was just a reminder that there is no one, since she started off talking about Adam and Eve, because I was going to say that, after they had sinned in the garden, there's none of us that's not going to sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can try our hardest, and yes, we can try not to to do commit a sin, mm -hmm. but it happens. So me telling a lie and me having premarital sex, God doesn't see any of that sin any less um, 
than the person who just shot somebody or anything. God sees sin as sin. It's all equal. And so when I read that, I'm like, we all have sin and fallen short. Now, where do I go to repent and start living my life the way God would really, really want me to? And I think that was a struggle. It had nothing to do with anybody else. I couldn't put blame on my boyfriend at the time. I couldn't put blame on my parents. I couldn't put blame on anyone. It was now a me and God thing. Because what I did is took God, even though I was going to church, I took him from the top and removed him and replaced him with so many other people. So it wasn't like God was flowing through me. I was letting like people pour into me. And so the shame that I felt, of course it was elevated because people are people. They're not right. God. Yeah. And if they are not walking in the Lord, but even some people I know who walk in the Lord, they like to hold shame over you too mm -hmm. or talk behind your back yeah. or gossip about those things that you've done. I think what's really important is allowing the Lord to work in you, to remind you of his perfect love, letting him perfect his love inside of you. And I think once that started happening, I started to experience things and look at things so different. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things you talked about, guys, love a lot. And I think even for me, as I went through my journey of like rededicating myself back to the Lord and kind of like trying to heal and be restored and all that stuff, I still had a hard time fully accepting the love of God or truly being able to grasp the fact that it's no matter what, that he loves me in spite of, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And mm -hmm. so that song, The Reckless Love of God, is like, like, you knew all the things that I would do and you sent your son Jesus. Like you, he picks that one out of the right. Nine. Like and so that, it, it's just such an so great. It, it's such an amazing thing. But I think sometimes because we are so used to worldly love and worldly affection that we sometimes have a hard time receiving the fact that there is God and He loves us so much, no matter what you know, in spite of. So, I mean, have you experienced times where you were kind of questioning or having a hard time grasping and receiving the love of God? For sure. Because I thought to myself, how could he love me with all these things that I've done? How could he love me and still want to provide for me, um, still wants this relationship with me? But then I had to think, okay, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? Why do we think that people on social media or or we can forgive a person or forgive other people, and sometimes we even struggle with that too, but why do we think that that acceptance and that love is gonna come through people liking our pictures? Or when you're at work telling you have a nice outfit, like we feel like, or that guy who brings you flowers, or the man who takes you out on the date, or whatever that is for anyone, it is, why do we feel so much that they can give us love, but God can't love us the same way? And they're so imperfect. They have imperfections like us. And we think like we get married or meet that husband, he's gonna love us so much. <laughs> But there is no one, or even when you have a child, that love that you have as a parent with your child, that love is unexplainable. But why do we think that we're not his children? Because we are. We're his daughters. We're his son in Christ. I just think constantly reminding myself, spending time in prayer, spending time in my word, constantly reading 1 John 4, um, verse 7 through 21, like reading it over and over and over again until it's embedded in my heart. It's kind of like our music, right? Some of us will um, listen to all these worldly songs, watch these shows, Real House of Atlanta, and whatever all these shows are, and we get it embedded in us. So we get all these songs embedded in us, these worldly songs, and that becomes our truth. Yeah. So why wouldn't we constantly, repeatedly read God's word? to know like, he loves me. Mm -hmm. I mean, something as simple as uh, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believe in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. Like he loved me that much right. to sacrifice his son? Yeah. 
like for me and yeah. so many other people, but yet we run to the world looking for that fulfillment. Mm -hmm. How can that be possible? How can we not believe that we are truly loved by the one and only true God? Yeah. I think when I look at it that way, there is no secular artist that can fulfill me like God's word can. I rather sit in silence and let the Holy Spirit speak to me mm -hmm. when I feel, and I think we think prayer has to be like this formality of dear Heavenly Father, like gracious Lord, like going in and it's just a conversation. Sometimes it could be like, Lord, I don't know what to do. I remember those days of falling out on my floor, literally prostrate, crying, saying, God, I feel lonely. I feel broken. I need you. I need you bad. I need you now. I need to hear from you. I need you to guide me. I don't want to stay stuck in this place. I know there's more for me. And so when we can cry out like that, just as much as some of us will cry out and chase after that boyfriend that left us that should be gone, or chase after that girlfriend that left us, or we cry out because um, we lost that job and we think we're supposed to be there when God could be shifting you someplace else, why don't we cry out to the Lord like that? I mean, we will cry on the phone to our friends for hours about something that's gone wrong, but we won't shut everything down to have that same conversation. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being here honest, like my friends can't answer those questions. Right. My friends can't be my savior. My parents can't be my savior. My parents love me. I have friends that love me, but they don't love me like Christ does. Yeah. And that's so good too. And I just want to add something to that. There have been so many times where I've been mad, frustrated, or whatever, and I'll go through my phone and I'll call those people that I'm frustrated <laughs> on that I want to vent to, and like nobody will answer. Then it's like, you know what? See, and then it's a reminder, Tracy, you could have already taken those same frustrations to the Lord. And by doing that, giving him those cares and your burdens and your frustrations, he's able to begin working. But because I ran to people who didn't answer, who they, weren't going to be able to solve my problem anyway. And then we get mad because we're like, not mad, but we're like, well, they didn't answer. So then we may turn on our music. Right. We just go back to doing what we're right. doing. And the Lord's like, that I'm trying to right. get your attention. That was your <laughs> moment to use the phone line between you and I yeah. to lay those burdens down yeah. at my feet. Yeah. Those worries, those anxieties, um, all those things, which mm -hmm. I think he talked, I mean, I think he talks about that too about laying all those at his feet. Like yeah. we're, he's there for us to tell him how we feel. Yeah. Even when we don't speak in those things in our closet that we have, uh, the Lord knows. Yeah. So you're definitely not hiding anything from him. And so I think it's just really important to replace those lies that you feel with God's truth. But in order to do that, you got to spend time. Just as much as you spend time like, girl, let's go out or got to watch that game or video games for a guy or whatever that is. Or I need to go grab a drink and watch a game at the bar. Like we make time for those things, right? Like how can we not make time for God? When do we set up the boundaries and say, well, Lord, I need to talk to you. I need to spend time with you. I desire to be changed. I am going to be changed. I want to live for you no matter what that cost is. And that has always been my desire. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't always get it right, but I feel free. Yeah. I, I can tell y'all, like, I'm free. Like, I'm healed. Like, I, you can ask me anything. I'm like that. I might cringe and say, God, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, but I don't feel the shame anymore because mm -hmm. I know I brought it before yeah. the Lord and I've laid it at his feet and yes. he has forgiven me. Yes. And I don't have to keep bringing it up over and over again. Mm -hmm. Once you bring it there, Lay it there. Yeah. That's not to say that you may not struggle in certain areas mm -hmm. of, it could be sexual sin, it could be a lying sin, it could be not handling money sin, it could be whatever it is, adultery sin, whatever that is for you. If you know it's a true struggle, instead of just saying, well, brushing that shame underneath the rug, nobody knows. Yes, the Lord knows. Yeah. And I think it's just, okay, Lord, I need your help. Right. And, and I think, too, um, if we go back to Genesis 2, how they were naked before God and they felt no shame. As believers, we he already knows 
everything about us. He knows everything that's in our heart. So we should be able to be completely vulnerable in giving him all of those things and saying, Lord, you know that this is in my heart or you know that I have hate in my heart towards this person. I'm going to give that over to you. Or like, God, you know that I'm still struggling with these sexual thoughts or whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to get to that point to where we're truly comfortable in being naked before God Mm -hmm. and who we are so that he can continue to do a work in us so that he can continue to show us those things so that we can put in the work as well to make sure that we are whole and we understand our identity in him and those things don't define us. Yeah. I think it gets, it gets tough though because it's funny how we can be vulnerable with strangers or so vulnerable with people but we can't have that same vulnerability with the one who already knows it before yeah. you even open your mouth. Yeah, totally agree. So, you know, I've struggled with a great deal of shame about different things. And this YouTube channel has been, uh, oh, how can I explain it? Like, I Therapeutic. Have, <laughs> like I have, you know, come on here and share some of my most vulnerable things that I've experienced, some of my most shameful things in light of wanting others to see and wanting others to look at the things that I've done and see that God can truly heal and that he can restore. Um, And I think it's been so important for me to stay rooted in the word so that I know my identity in Christ so that I don't allow the world to define me, but it's the word of God that defines me. So talk about your journey and really learning your identity in Christ and not walking in, in shame anymore. I will say this, that it became, um, I did find great churches that had solid teaching. Mm -hmm. Um, That was really big for me. Solid biblical teaching, not all like the hoopla and everything, but really, and had great ministries. If it was a single mom's ministry that I was a part of um, at my old church back in Ohio, or um, just getting into a small group, small group Bible study, being able to hear other people's story and their truth, um, replacing God's truth with the lies of shame was starting to be encouraging for me. And when I moved to Atlanta a couple years ago, but I would say earlier this year, a friend of mine introduced me to someone and I thought I had been healed pretty well and I was doing, I was on a great road. Um, I would say this year, it, and it's only what, going into the six months, it's only five months in, going into six months, but I feel like I've, I've been walking in like crazy freedom. I had already started the healing process, but I'm in like an amazing place. But a friend of mine introduced me to someone else that kind of um, was a single mom too, thinking that we were going to be friends. And a situation transpired, but I believe God used her to um, help me find this counseling center that I go to now. Um, And it's a Christian discipleship counseling center here right in Atlanta, a little bit outside of Atlanta. And it's been amazing because it is Holy Spirit led. Um, If you're interested, um, you can ask Tracy and I'll send her the information to send you. But it's been amazing because we literally talk about the biblical truths. But we also talk about that history. Like I have to be very honest about where I am in life and how I feel and the things that I think about. And I was healed on the surface and probably like halfway. But I think there were still some things that were lying dormant in Mm -hmm. me that if someone might have touched that nerve, it would have came out yeah. and so sometimes we think we're like we're I'm healed it's been years like yeah. I'm no bad don't bother me yeah. and I just remember praying and asking God that I do desire to be married one day and I don't want to bring any of that into a marriage like I want to be made whole um I think we think about when we get married or getting or have that desire that we want to have like financial stability and a good job I don't know how many of us just pray like God make us make me whole because I don't want to bring any of that past or shame into my marriage. Mm -hmm. Like it's not my husband's fault that I feel the way I do. It's not my husband's fault that I decided to have premarital sex. And now those soul ties that are attached to me that I never like just allowed to just 
got to free me from, I'm now bringing that in mm-hmm. to a marriage. So I think it was just really crucial for me at 38 years old to say, God, I do desire, I have a heart to serve you. So if you're going to use me for your glory, not even just for marriage, but how can I minister to other women? How can I lead or serve in my church when I, there's still some things that you need to do in me. I didn't know that that prayer would be answered through some random woman. And that conversation was one of the toughest conversations because I didn't know this woman. And what she said to me, I was just like, it was so hurtful. And I just cried. And it's so easy to like want to pick out like when someone says something to you and you're like, man, they just were mean. But maybe God is trying to show you something through that conversation. And I'm just truly blessed that she even mentioned this counseling center to me. And she said, just allow the Holy Spirit, basically, not verbatim, but basically allow the Holy Spirit, pray and ask God. Because she goes, I know you have a relationship with them. She didn't doubt that part. But she's like, maybe there's still some inner healing that needs to be done. And when I really took it before the Lord, I think, I was like, yeah, there is. There was even some like maybe little identity issues down deep inside that I had not dealt with. Or even some hurts from my childhood with my family Mm -hmm. um, that I really had not dealt with. I kind of dealt with what was present at that time, but not really digging deeper. And so now, I mean, my counselor and I, we laugh and we talk because we know it was Holy Spirit led. But I think we look at counseling as being a bad thing or I can't afford it. Oh, you can't. You can afford it. Think about how much money you spend on your clothes, on Netflix, <laughs> <laughs> on yeah. going out to eat. Yeah. Um, and truly, if it's something that you desire to do, I can tell you that God will make a way. He will make, yeah. he will he make a way, make way. Um, for you to get that healing. He'll make it a way for you to go to counseling if it's every week or every other week. Like He will make a way. If it's something you truly desire... If you truly not desire to walk in full healing and you just want to kind of like, I can do this by myself because there's so many of us like, I got this. I read my word. I go to church. I got this. And you use your friends as your therapeutic where I think God has really placed people in those positions for a purpose. So my counselor, needless to say, that was kind of long, but going through this process, I get this binder, but in this binder, it shows like the lies of the enemy and it matches it with God's truth. Oh, no. And it gives you scripture for every single lie that you tell yourself, I'm not good enough. Oh, there's a scripture right there for that. So go to that. Um, I'm not wanted or I feel uh, ashamed of my past. There's a scripture about him forgiving you of your sins. Um, I don't feel like I'm good enough. That's a lie from the enemy and it matches his truth. So then you can start going through those scriptures anytime you feel that way and then start matching it with God's truth. And when you start reading those over and over again, they get embedded here. And so you're like, wow, Lord, my identity is not found in man. My identity is not found in what people think on social media or on my Facebook or Instagram page or what I've gone through in my past. Lord, what's my present and how much you love me? And I mean, there's so many lies. Like who knew how many lies the enemy tells each of us on a daily basis? Some of those lies didn't relate to me or how I felt, but they could possibly relate to you or what you've gone through. But there's God's truth that replaces every single lie in the Bible. And I I love that. I think that's what started to shift my identity once I allowed God to start to perfect his love in me and desire, even though I was healed, but I desire a deeper healing and a deeper desire to go deeper in my walk with Christ. I can tell you too how I can tell a lot of people are not healed. When I see people post on Instagram, sometimes it baffles me. Not baffles me, because it is the way, but it gives me something to pray for. Because people say, like, I'm good. They talk to their best friends. They pick up the phone. They're like, I'm good. You know, I'm good. They, after the conversation, they think their best friend has, like, given them the words of wisdom. And, it, you know, they're good. They're just going to tough it up, you know. And all I see is constant hurt and hurt and hurt. And hello, newsflash people. Our friends and family are not God. 
They don't have the answers, but I can tell you one that does. And I think when we stop running to people and run to the Lord, there is something that the Holy Spirit starts to do in you that reminds you that you're a child and that you're loved and that you're more than enough and that you're not filled with shame and that that shame has been washed by Jesus' blood and we all have, can be made clean and made whole again. And I think once we recognize that, that our friends didn't wash us in their blood, our mom and dad didn't wash us in their blood, and not that God doesn't use people to give you encouragement, like this situation here, but I just think so often we run to other people to help us find that place and that mm -hmm. identity and we still stay stuck in that place where we're just like, I still feel that shame. Yeah. And some of us too, we stay in ministries and churches because it's comfortable. We might not, it might be a season for you to change to be under a different leadership or a different sound, um, a sound ministry that really teaches true biblical principles and that touches on that hard stuff. I mean, I go to a church that they preach on some tough topics that sometimes make me want to go like this. <laughs> like, I'm like, were you in my journal this week? <laughs> Did you know this? Um, that make me really evaluate myself. And so I'm even challenged when I go to church, if it's a Saturday night service or Sunday, depending on what I have going on, which service I choose. Um, and then when I'm part of a ministry and the people I do ministry with start to hold you accountable as well, it does, it makes you say, okay, Lord, I need to get my life right. I need to do this right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that can make a difference too, because then my church has a lot of resources as well. I didn't find the counseling through that, but I know they offer so much stuff. And um, it's been super helpful to be under a, a sound ministry that teaches the biblical truth too about those hard things that sometimes other churches or other ministries don't touch because one, to be honest with you, some of our ministers have shame. I think we look at them and put them on a platform. Yeah. But some of them are dealing with shame or things in the closet. So they're not going to preach on things that they're like, God, I don't want to know. Right. I don't I want you to convict me. Right. I don't want you to convict me of that truth or like <laughs> of that identity yeah. issue because I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just sometimes really important to, and even if it's not a shift of your ministry, of finding those you can surround yourself with, a small group Bible study. Um, you don't have to necessarily go to that church to be a part of a small group or whatever that is, or being invited to a Bible study, or maybe you're starting your own Bible study, and just that community of holding each other accountable um, can be really good. Because our identity is not found in sex, it's not found in clothing, mm -hmm. it's not found in social media, it's not found in that abortion you had, it's not found in that failed marriage, it's not found uh, in being a single mother or a single dad, it's not found in alcoholism, or drug addiction or sexual addiction or whatever it is for you pornography addiction I think that's the thing like we like to people place labels over us mm -hmm. and that becomes our identity and that's it's, it's a label that a person placed over you right. you can command for the enemy to not have that label you you're not that I don't care if you're an alcoholic or whatever you're struggling with you're a child of God that's our identity. That's where our identity lies. These are just things that we struggle with on this earth. But we can change that. So don't let someone just continue to like pour what your mistakes have been over you because you're not you're not those and your identity is not found in that. Your identity is found in Jesus Christ. And I think that's just really important to remember. Yeah. And one more thing um, before we wrap up. I know a struggle for me sometimes is I, I'm from a small town and so I know that people know things about me and I know that on this YouTube channel things that I share they might not have known but then then they know no. they're talking about it and um I, I I can't say it exactly like what my purpose is but I do um believe I, I care about women I care about them knowing their identity in Christ and not being bound to the things of their past or to shame or anything like that um but I sometimes still struggle with walking confidently in this, you know what I mean? And being confident and sharing what God has placed on my heart to help someone. Um, so in your journey, I mean, I still do it anyway because my obedience to God 
-hmm. is is worth more so like I do it anyway even though sometimes I'm very uncomfortable in doing it mm -hmm. um but just kind of talk about how you have gotten to a point and I know you talked about your freedom and understanding the love of God but what are some other things that you want to share that have helped you um walk more confidently um and what you believe God is calling and purposing for you I think God uses our past and the things we go through, it is for his purpose. Um, that you're not alone in what you're walking in. I think sometimes we can feel like, I'm the only one going through this. Mm -hmm. Even though we may physically know that, it may it's not true because there's yeah. someone that's gone through it. But I believe God uses those things like you say, I'm not sure about my purpose. I believe you know what your purpose is as you're using YouTube <laughs> to share those things. <laughs> um, I believe so much you know what your purpose is. I believe it's walking and allowing God to continue to um, strengthen inside of you, your heart, your mind, your soul, the shame that you feel, allowing him to heal that. Um, because he can use what was dirty and use it for his purpose. Yeah. I think about Joseph. What they, what God was gonna, well, what they thought they were doing to Joseph. Was it Joseph? Yeah. Yeah. Joseph, like, getting rid of him as brothers. Yeah. Like, didn't want him as a brother. Mm -hmm. um, then he got thrown in jail. Got thrown in jail. Yeah. I mean, so much. Look how God used what was bad and evil and people talked about him for his good and used Joseph to help his brothers. Yeah. I mean, a lot of our purpose is found in, how should I say this, in our sins that we've committed in our past. It is found in those moments when we're walking in the wilderness by ourselves <laughs> or with others. Um, I think about the Israelites, you know, with Moses, um, I think about how Joshua, his purpose was found walking through the wilderness was Moses and, you know, being an assistant to Moses. I don't know what Joshua all went through during that time because you don't hear everything about Joshua's past. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Moses wasn't like, he was great in God's eyes, right? He, I'm sure that he had some past things too that he may have experienced. Yeah. Um, I think about so many biblical characters that have had a past. Um, Esther lied <laughs> and became a king's became a queen and a king's wife and look how God used her sin of lying to not only just um, God to use her in the kingdom and you don't ever hear the word of God mentioned in the book of Esther but you see the presence of God all up in that book I just believe God uses it could be harm things, harmful things, or things that people have said to you. It could be um, things you've experienced if you're past. I just believe God uses that to glorify him and to use his purpose. It's just a matter of us being willing to answer the call and say, God, okay, I'm ready. And to be vulnerable and to be open. When you see Jesus going through um, walking and sharing and healing people. Jesus has some days where he probably didn't, he didn't want to be out there walking. I mean, he had some days, I'm sure that he got upset as you see with the disciples. Yeah. Um, so there were not always good days. I think it's just reminding ourselves that we are human. We're never going to be perfect, but we can do our best to walk as close with him and your purpose is found in those things. If you didn't walk through anything, how can you help anybody? People love to hear from people who have gone through the same experiences for them, with them. Or just actually not with them, but just like them. So if I've never been an alcoholic, how can someone, how can I really talk to someone and they really probably listen to me if I haven't even walked that journey? Um, some people really love, so you might have a story. Your past might be what God wants to use to elevate you to use. It could be you mismanaged money all your life, and now you're walking in freedom with tithing and offering and blessing others, and you've gotten your finances in order, and no one ever knew that you just had all this debt, and because you've always lived an amazing life, 
And now God wants to use that for his glory mm -hmm. and his purpose. So I just really believe like our past and that shame can be used for God's glory because now we get to talk about it. We get to walk in it. Um, not walk in the shame, but walk in that purpose God has for us to share the truths of his word mm -hmm. with so many people and to show like what God can do. Because yes. it doesn't make sense that I'm 38 and have the life that I have and have the most amazing son and friends. <laughs> um, how God has blessed me to meet so many wonderful yeah. people. Um, but I'm just thankful that I continue to seek that healing and I wanted it for myself. And there were moments I turned the phone down and I fasted and I prayed because I desired that relationship with God more than I desire any other relationship with my parents, with my son. Like it, it has to get to that point of desperation if you know you still deal with things and you want to, you want to be healed. Yeah. And I just want to encourage you guys too before we go is to trust God. Um, with your whole life and you know to get to a point so where like you're willing to just put it on the table and and give it over to him and allow him to to do an amazing work in you because when I think about my own life and what he's done in me like nobody like nobody but God it's nobody but yeah, God like like nobody 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 but God nobody but God um so just, you know, trusting him and, and learning what the word of God says about you and so that you can have that written on the tables of your heart so that it flows out of you and able to fight all of those negative thoughts and those reminders of things that you've done that the enemy would try to place in your mind to do. And Brandy mentioned John three sixteen, but um, right after that in verse 17 it goes to say that God did not send his son to the world that the world might be condemned but that it might be saved through him yeah. and so I think we have to always remember that that he loved us so much that he sent his son into the world and it wasn't for condemnation it was so that we could be saved and that we could be made right with it God. wasn't for putting you down yeah. it wasn't for people it to manipulate that. you yeah. um, because they know you're broken it right. wasn't for that yeah. So those who keep reminding you of your past, you pray and you continue to say, that is not who I am. Right. But the blood. <laughs> it has been but nothing the but blood. the blood of Jesus. Yeah. But reminding, like, sometimes you do have to tell people, that is not who I am. Yeah. That's who I was. Right. This is who I am today. Yeah. yeah. That was good. Okay. You got anything else you want to say, Brandy? No. Okay. I'm just... Um, I'm really looking forward to what God's going to do in your life and how you're going to submit to the Lord. I did forget to mention, I would say last summer, my friend did send me to a, a, a retreat um, where that healing started before I did counseling this year. So I did forget to mention that. That was amazing. It was last July. So that started a lot of healing too. That was great as well. And to be a part with ladies that were seeking that same healing. Mm -hmm. So ladies, you are not alone. Guys, you're not alone. I know there are men to you that um, get together and they pray over each other and you just have to find that community. But you are a child of God and yes. he loves you so, yes. so much. And wanted. And wanted. And wanted. Yes. And he needs you. Yes. And you're accepted. Yeah. And you don't have to look for that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I just pray that you're reminded of that every single day. Every day. That you're not the label of what the world gives you. Yes. Um, so Brandy is on Instagram. I She's guess. always posting like the most encouraging, <laughs> encouraging <laughs> and convicting things. <laughs> but the good thing about that too, um, conviction is a gift. Like it's a good thing, right? When you feel you like, okay, yeah, thank you for that check. Now let me go over here and do what I need to do. Um, but she's always posting really good things. So you're on Instagram as Brandy Berwick? Yes, I am. My full name, even Facebook. So you can request me as a friend. And my first name is B-R-A-N-D-E. Um, and last name is B-E-R-W-I-C-K. Yeah. So feel free to follow me or message me. Follow Brandy. She'll bless your life. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. And this will not be the last time that you'll see Brandy on here. She'll be back sharing her journey that she's on right now of truly living by faith. And I'm just excited <laughs> that I get to witness this up close and personal and seeing the amazing things that God is doing in her life and even in her son. So just, just thankful. 
Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe. I really appreciate all of you um, watching, and I hope that you have been blessed and encouraged by this.